Today's Bible study is titled Expectations of Resting to Walk. As I noted in part one, due to many years of a frustrated walk, any time I now hear about the walk of a believer and member of the body of Christ, I must go back and frame that walk as it is summarized in the overall teaching of the Apostle Paul and particularly in his Ephesian epistle. A few key words in Ephesians direct us to how this is all supposed to work. These are sit, walk, and stand. After looking at sit yesterday, today we'll briefly look at walk as regards our life in the world. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, mocketh increase of the body unto the edifying, of itself in love. Ephesians 4 verses 1 and 14 to 16 From our position of rest, seated in the heavenlies in Christ, we are to walk, colon. But we must remember from whence that walk comes, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2 verse 10 From the overflow of who we are in Christ, we are to walk worthy of that calling. And in this rested calling, God produces the results of verses 14 to 16 from the overflow. But remember from yesterday that all of this is preceded by sit or resting in the truths pertaining to you because you are in Christ. Apart from resting in Him, you cannot walk. Only when we begin with rested belief of the truth will God produce the walk from the overflow. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.